Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Airspeed's Avatar Rewatch video. This one's going to be for Book 2 Earth, Episode 14, The City of Walls and Secrets. This episode is animated by JM Animation, and uh, yeah, this is a really, really interesting episode. And we've obviously been building up to arriving in Bossing Say for a long time. And here's the episode where we finally, I suppose, are here and get to actually see the city because we were kind of on the wall, just in front of the wall. We saw just a little bit inside uh, in the last episode, the drill. And now we actually get to see the full scope of the city. And it's, it's a very interesting episode because immediately we're into the idea of like, okay, here is the last like major free city left that really the, uh, the Fire Nation hasn't been able to have a huge impact on. Here's the place where basically the the holdout is going to be, this is where the Earth Kingdom leads their kind of counter-offensive, their defense against the Fire Nation from. And so the reveal of this conspiracy theory that the aim of the people in charge of Ba Sing Se is that no one in Ba Sing Se talk about the war or really have it discussed or known within the walls that there's a war going on to the point where the Earth King actually doesn't know there's a war is this crazy situation because it's not just that like oh it's all a kind of lie they're trying to form it into a utopia when it is just this kind of place that takes in like tons and tons of refugees puts the poor people in the outer rings and the rich people in the inner rings and just you know hopes that the defense holds out I think the most like um like baffling thing is just the idea of like there is no planned like counteroffensive against the Fire Nation. It's literally just if they come, we defend, and that's it. There's no sense of like like Long Fang is technically in charge of the Earth Kingdom, effectively, the entire military force that's there. And he just seems to have no interest whatsoever in ending the war. He just treats it as like it's endless and there's nothing he can do. So he just deals with what he has there in front of him, which is dealing with the walls and Bossing Say and how everything affects that. Um, I think it's it's a really cleverly written idea to kind of really turn around how you kind of feel about Bossing Say as a place that has been set up as like this great, amazing city, and then you get there and you find out that it's divided li really kind of bluntly with these walls by class and it's very difficult for people to kind of climb up and get to that point you find out that the king is a figurehead that uh, this kind of political guy Long Feng he's the one who's actually in charge of things and no one knows anything about the war you have this, these people who whenever new people come in who are like notable uh, and especially the inner rings don't know anything about the war they have people to escort them around and have it so that anything they say to other people is always dismissed because you have a Judy in the background to kind of shut any sort of talk down. So it was interesting in that Team Avatar were very clearly talking to almost everyone they met about the war. Like that student at Bossing Say University. They mentioned to him about the war and he's just like, uh, I don't know anything about that. So it's clear that a lot of people know about the war within the walls. But it's just, it's so policed by the Dai Li, by the Judies and stuff like that, that no one can really talk openly about it. So um, it's, it's really, it's a really, really well written episode. You know, it's not the most like, I suppose, eventful episode in that it is a lot of kind of conspiracy reveals without a ton happening. And then you have the action take place in the Zuko side of the episode. And I suppose I'll cover that right now. Um, the Zuko jet side of the episode is, is effectively um, Zuko and Iroh get jobs in a tea shop, of course. Iroh's organized it. It's this idea that there's nothing they can really do. They're in Bossing Say now, on the run from Azula and the Fire Nation. They kind of have to settle down in Bossing Say for a while to figure out what's going on, so they kind of just have to get on with their lives. Um, Zuko's obviously not particularly happy about that. He really doesn't know what direction he's taking right now. He he, at this point, he's very low in regards to like hope, and he doesn't really know if he'll ever come across Aang again to capture him. And even even if he does, what possible scenario is there where he can capture Aang and then just bring Aang before his father without like Azula getting in the way? So it's a really bad situation for Zuko and his goals, what his arc has been up to now. 
And then Jed is now onto them and thinks that they're both firebenders and is basically spying on them to completely confirm it as he begins to become obsessed with this and separate himself from his friends, Smellerby and Longshot, who have always been the, the two most loyal members of the Freedom Fighters to him. And so I, I think that's an, it's a kind of tragic and interesting dynamic of just seeing those two gradually you know, move away from Jed as he goes solo to investigate them and then just eventually nothing's happening, he just snaps and attacks them. And it leads to a really, really cool fight scene of just two people with two swords fighting each other outside of a tea shop as it, it's such a weird situation to see like Zuko and Iroh usually are on the run or something's happening where they have to stay undercover on their own and now suddenly like the police force within the city that they're in is on their side. Jet is the one who everyone's like thinks is a crazy madman and when the end, by the end when he's arrested by the Dai Li and taken off it's just like what a unique situation where like Zuko technically is on the right side of this situation because Jet's trying to kill him and he's just trying to do his job um crazy turn of events um knowing who he is and then the the reveal at the towards the end of just like the brainwashing that like it's not just this sense of talk is shut down if you actually try to rebel against the decision made by the higher ups to not talk about the war you're taken away and brainwashed so that you don't talk about the war and you act like everything is fine within the walls that they shut that down completely if you choose to rebel and um, that was a really crazy reveal and then I think the Judy reveal as kind of more or less the cliffhanger at the end was very very impressive to just be like oh there's just a legion of these people called Judy they're all different people but they're all brainwashed to basically try and brainwash other people and convince them not to talk about these things like that's how crazy and entrenched all of this is and I suppose I, I do want to quickly talk about um, how this situation came to be I, I, I think ultimately you look at the lore that we know about this it's probably something that should have been presented a little bit clearer within the show well I, I mean when I say that I don't, that suggests that it was actually in the show it should have been presented at all in the show um, and that is basically a little bit more about Long Feng and specifically King Kuei's history and that is that you know, who, who here knows what age King Kuei is? He's actually 25, which I, I think is a shock whenever I kind of check that up and it's just like, oh yeah, he's actually really young. His kind of outfit and stuff like that makes him look a little bit older, but he is only like 25. He's not like that much older than some of our kind of like older team members. You know, it's about 10 years, but still, he's still a fairly young leader. And then, you know, the history of how he became the king is that the 51st Earth King, his father, died when Kuei was very young. I think he was only four years old. And so you have a king who's four years old. Of course you need someone to step up to actually do a lot of the important responsibility stuff. And that's Long Feng. From the position that he was in, being very high up in the government, he was the one who effectively became almost like acting Earth King just during the early days of King Kuei's reign. And then when Kuei was able to actively do it himself, he kept so much from Kuei that he remain he basically maintained that position of power. I'm I'm a little shocked that they just never went into that to give the history between the two of them to get why Kuei trusts Long Feng so much. Imagine the impact that a little a small little like couple of minute long backstory would have been of young Kuei being thought all this stuff by Long Feng and Long Feng lying to him, assuming the power while Kuei is just left in the dark about all of this stuff because the big thing with Quay is just that he's not told anything and so he's not knowledgeable about the world and is in a position where most of our younger characters know more about the world than he does so when we hit, when we hit the promise we have so many inexperienced world leaders that that explains that situation happening but um, you know it also leads back as well to the 46th Earth King and Kiyoshi forcing a change within how the Earth King operates in terms of the position of King going from being this all-powerful, like, complete control over everything within Bossing Say, to being more of like, okay, I suppose it goes from being a, like, all-powerful King to more being a kind of, like, president type situation where, like, they still have power, but it's not all-powerful. And that's where the Dai Li come into play uh, with that incident. 
that's where the position of Grand Secretariat is formed, and it's this sudden little loss of power that ultimately, in the long run, led to what happens in Bossing Say and what's going to happen going into like the finale of this book. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting stuff that I think should have also been presented, but um, what we get here I think is fine in that this is where we get introduced to the city. I also would have liked it if we had got a little bit more about the whole idea of old Bossing Say, that prior to, you know, all this stuff having the walls, the city was underground. It was an underground city. When we get to the catacombs later on, they are what the city originally was, and I'd love to get the full history of this place, because it's, it's, there's a little bits and pieces that we know, but it's kind of not very connected. So, a lot of uh, really, really fascinating information we have about this stuff that speaks to, like, there's other information out there that could make these episodes actually better than they are. But, um, going back to Team Avatar's, um, what they encounter within the walls, um, it's, it's interesting, like, Sokka and Judy, I think that's a very interesting interaction of just, like, Sokka always has to deal with the people who act like idiots, and in this case it's being, you know, ignoring all the, like, crazy stuff he's saying so that, you know, she's just doing her job, but it's really interesting to see Sokka just get so frustrated at, like, oh yeah, we, we're here because we went to Spirit Library and did all this stuff and there's important information for the Earth King and she's just like, eh, yeah, we'll continue the tour and just ignores everything he wants to say. And the result, obviously, is that they are given a house within the upper ring of the city. I feel they also should have, at some point, explained why that is the case because I think you'd be forgiven for, like, just, like, ignoring the connection between the previous episode and this one because... They just kind of arrive in the city, and then it's just like, oh, how did this person know you were here? But then it's just like, oh, like, because they were deal dealing with uh, General Fung in the last episode, he obviously informed, like, the higher-ups in the city about what happened, and that the reason they're given this house is because Aang saved the, 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 t the team, saved the Earth Kingdom from the drill. That's fundamentally why they're getting this kind of high-profile treatment here. It's not just because the Avatar showed up, it is because of the events of uh, 13. I felt they should have been a little like, like actually say that. Um, but anyway, uh, the result is that they don't seem to get anywhere. They have all this information, they begin to find out about the lack of information within the walls, that they want to see the Earth King, but they can't talk to him for more than a month. And that's where the uh, kind of uh, the party for Bosco, the irregular bear, comes in. And I think an almost forgotten part of this episode is the amazing humor of it. It's just that like they, they devote like 20, 30 seconds of the episode to just a long joke about hybrid animals and then King Kuei having a regular bear. And they just list off all these other types of bears and they're just like, no, it's just a normal bear. And they're like, weird. And I, I, it... It's a really, really good joke and how it works and how later on when you see Bosco, he is just a regular bear and everyone's just like, oh, I want a seat next to the bear. Um, and then Momo in this episode is actually really well done. They're, they, the animators are constantly doing something with him and then they're even in the dialogue drawing attention to him of just like, Ang, when Sokka and he do the fancy talk, they do the like Lord Momo and you see him do the bow. And then when they're talking in the next scene, Momo just kind of walks across along the bottom of the screen, still wearing the kind of robe type thing. Um, so that's that's pretty funny. And then, you know, you had him messing with the animals when they went into the shop to search for Appa. Um, and then later on, you also see one of the Dali capture him. So it's just like, they're not just ignoring an animal as part of the group. They're still treating him like he's always there. And it's important to keep him as part of the group. So I, I definitely like that. But um, this whole party and it being in the upper ring of the city led to the whole oh suddenly Toph is in play here and her dynamic in this episode is like she knows exactly what's going to happen to them here they're in high society they're being handled uh, which is always what happens to her she doesn't like being in these type of cities and I like the point that she made of just like I was thought these manners but I chose to kind of leave it behind and take a different approach but I still know them you guys don't and she takes the lead and is just like, yeah, Katara and me will pull it off. You two won't. And um, they obviously kind of try to get in. They end up getting in through Long Feng. But it basically ends up getting them all identified. And the whole team gets captured during this. The Earth King is kind of brought through. But it's just a really like quick, like he's there for a couple of seconds and gone. 
And so the team is captured, they're informed basically about all of the stuff that's going on here that, you know, the, the king is effectively a figurehead, Long Feng's in charge of everything, the Dai Li, and, you know, they treated the team like guests, but if they're not willing to cooperate, well, bit of blackmail going on here. Clearly Long Feng knows exactly what happened to Appa, and, you know, that's how the team is going to be kept in check. So we end the episode with the team kind of unable to properly act within the city. They're just kind of stuck living there and hoping something can happen. Hoping that, you know, they can somehow maybe come across Appa. But it is this situation where it's just, in a way, the plot is just ground to a halt now. That they know Long Feng has Appa. They're not allowed to talk about the war, but they have to, to some, in, to some extent, get the plans of the eclipse to um, the Earth King. So there's just this really big kind of like moment where just like Long Feng, just in terms of political maneuverings, has kind of brought the entire journey to like a, a sudden stop. And I think that's a really interesting thing within this episode that they managed to just stop the the plot progression at this point in time because. Obviously, the next two episodes are very different. We get a, a run of kind of more mundane episodes, um, uh, like, uh, so sequences in the Tales of Bossing Say, and then we get the Tale of Appa uh, in Appa's Lost Days, and then we return to what's happening with the whole like Lao guy actually investigating stuff. So, um, very very interesting and intriguing episode. That there's a lot of complexities to this episode, which I think is one of the the more unique parts of it, and then like. On the Jet Zuko side of things, they're also in a, in a situation similar to Team Avatar now, where everyone's just in bossing, say, they had kind of these grand ideas, but like Zuko and Iroh just have to kind of settle down and, you know, work their jobs while they figure out what's going on. And if Team Avatar are just kind of there, like, what about the war? How, how is Aang going to continue his training? And all this sort of stuff is just like, they're just temporarily stuck. I, I assume they'd be allowed to leave the city if they wanted to, but they know Oppa's there, so they kind of have to stay. And then the hope of getting the plans to the Earth King at some point, so... Um, just great dynamics presented in terms of a real, you know, changing episode that really... You go in with one interpretation of Bossing Say, you come out with a completely different one, so... Yeah, that's been the video, thanks for watching, and bye!